rattle a hold you. So let's specifically talk about vaping. Vaping comes in many delivery systems, right? If you are not educated, there are so many different vape delivery products out there and so many ways for our kids to hide that they're vaping and so many ways for people to do it right in front of you and not even know that they're doing it that if you are not educated as a parent, please do yourself a favor and research and look at and find out exactly what they look like. They come in every shape and size. They have vaping products that look like credit cards. They have vaping products that look like, um, like uh, memory sticks for, for computers. They have ones that look like little teardrops. And then they have these big old, uh, um, they call them mods, right? With the thing and the, and the tank and all the different stuff. And, um, and it's interesting, when that whole thing started taking off, there's a picture, those are different mods. There's one on the left, right? It was the big old um, unit that's holding juice. When that started taking off, I was reminiscent of being a kid, so I was a marijuana user. And when we were kids, the, and, and any, any uh, teenagers or younger kids like mine that are sitting in the room, when I say the cool kids, I want to call myself on that. The cool kids who were not cool at all, who thought they were the cool kids, we used to show off our little pipes for marijuana and our different bongs and look at our different stuff and the glass this and the different products, and it was this thing. That's what goes on with those bigger products is, is they have different designs and, and, and stuff engraved on them and they have gold plated ones and, and different flavored juices and all this stuff that makes this thing, look what I got. And it's almost like a vaping status symbol or something, right? And if you don't know about these products, do yourself a favor and educate yourself on these products um, because your kid could be doing it right in front of you. Uh, you know, if you walk into your kid's room and suddenly you're smelling fruity smells and odd odors that weren't there before, and they try to tell you, oh, it's uh, incense that I'm burning, or it's whatever, if your kid's burning incense in their room, they're covering up some other smell, first of all, right? <laughs> and, uh, and if you smell any of that stuff, the smell gives it away more than anything. Uh, you know, here's the nature of addiction, right? We have, uh, uh, we have outpatient treatment and we provide group counseling and our group counseling sessions are relatively short in comparison. Like we're never sitting there more than an hour and a half at a time before we'll take a break or something like that. And we have, we have people that will get up and use the bathroom and after we're done with our sessions, I'll go to the bathroom and it'll smell like that fruity flavor. And I'm like, really, you can't wait an hour and a half? You can't go an hour and a half without using vape products, right? That's the nature of the addictive, uh, that's the addictive properties of the nicotine. One of the other problems with vaping is that the delivery of, because we've been sold that it's not as harmful, when you know, when you watch somebody who vapes, pay attention to how they do it. It's not like, even smoking cigarettes, right? It would be smoke a cigarette every couple hours or something like that. And you smoke the whole cigarette and you put it out. With vaping products, if you watch, it's hit after hit after hit after hit after hit, nonstop. And if they're in an environment where they can do it, then it's nonstop. They might be able to not do it if they're inside a building that doesn't allow it. But I guarantee you watch them, they're going to my bathroom during the IOP groups and, and vaping in there because that's the delivery system. It's hit after hit after hit after hit, right? Um, what we're seeing in terms of numbers is 37.3% um, of 12th graders use vape on a, on a regular basis. That is everywhere across the board. That is, Santa Cruz is no different than anywhere else out here um, in, in the United States. 37.3, that is a huge number, right? And so every, every teenager that we get just about does, uh, uses vape. And what they tell me is every kid that they know uses vape. And so that number right there is probably low because they get these numbers, this is, these numbers are put out by, um, by the uh, CDC and by, um, by SAMHSA and by NIDA, and they do interviews basically with 12th graders. And so, you know, there's gonna be a certain percentage there that, that are going, I don't do it, I, I've never done it, nobody I know does it, right? Yeah. Which is not the truth. Every kid that I talk to, when they're in an environment where they feel like they can tell the truth, um, they say everybody I know does it. Mm -hmm.
everybody I know does it. And it's a big problem. You know, I, I um, um, parents are throwing their hands up because they don't know how to combat it. Teachers are throwing their hands up. Administrators at school don't know what to do about it. They have rules and they have regulations and they have, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of ways that they want to combat it. But kids are doing it right there in class with the teacher in the class. You know, um, and so it is a it's a big problem. Uh, a ten percent increase in the last year, 2017 to 2018, is when they did the study. Um, so and it keeps going up and it keeps increasing. One in 10 eighth graders, right? Eighth grade. Um, you know, something to be noted about drug use that you may not know, because, I, you know, I look at my, so a little self-disclosure, the first time that I used marijuana, I was 10 years old. My son right here is 10 years old. I look at him and I think there's no way. There's no way, right? 10 years old, 10 year olds are using it, right? Um, uh, most drug use starts between the ages of 12 and 17. Between the ages of 12 and 17. In today's world, it's closer to 12. So one in 10 eighth graders that is using it, that are using it, is probably a low number. I can almost guarantee you that it's higher than that. 60%, 67% say it's easy to get. I've already told you that. Every kid that I talk to says everybody's doing it. If I wanted to do it, I could do it, right? And, um, and like I said, this was a couple of weeks ago I put this on. Two confirmed deaths that I read a couple of weeks ago. Where are we at now, like six? Yeah, and, and just recently, a few days ago, one in Los Angeles County, one in Los Angeles County. I wanna tell you about a 15-year-old that came to our treatment center a year ago. He never enrolled in our treatment center, and I'll tell you why, because, because I, on some level, I have been sold to lie as well. So these parents call me and they say, hey, our kid needs treatment. And I go, what is he doing? He's 15 years old. And they said he's vaping. And so I had a real candid conversation with the parents and I said, look, is that all he's doing? Because I've been sold the lie, the lie, right? Is that all that he's doing is vaping? And I said, to tell you the truth, most of our kids that come to us are doing far more dangerous stuff. And if you put him in this environment, I'm afraid that he may get exposed to other stuff. And so let's work with him with the vaping um, you know, I started seeing him privately and working with him and working with his family so that I could help him. And the first time that I met with him, I said, oh my God, this is no different than any other drug. He had been hospitalized four times in that year for overdosing on nicotine. Overdosing on nicotine. I go, wow, I, I, I've heard of that, but it's not a common thing. And he says, yeah. He goes, a lot of my friends have overdosed on nicotine, but I'm the only one who's gone to my parents and said, I need to go to the hospital. Severe sweats, severe nausea, breathing problems, anxiety, feels like his, his heart's coming out of his chest, he's cold, sweating, and he needs to go to the hospital, and they, and they said, it's nicotine, it's a nicotine overdose. I said, how do you overdose on nicotine? Don't you know when you're getting enough off of that vape? Right, because they're, they're, they have a number of how much nicotine is in. And you know what he told me? He said, because they're illegal, here's what my friends do. Anybody who's under the age that wants to vape, they're ordering pure nicotine juice online. Anybody can do it. And they're getting the pure nicotine juice, and then they're getting the fruity, fla fruity flavors that you can put in the delivery juice, and they're mixing it themselves, and they're not chemists, they're 15 years old. So they're going, here's some nicotine. Oh, that looks good. Here you go, my friend. And they are smoking stuff, vaping stuff, that they have no idea how much nicotine is in this. That's his case, right? And so I had to talk to him about, I did, you know, he needed an education on the dangers of nicotine. Nicotine is poison. It's poison. It will kill you, absolutely, 100%. And so, um, and so uh, uh, you know, that's the kind of, stories that we're getting now as far as nicotine goes. I wanna, you know, as far as the numbers go, this. these resources, if you want these resources, see us afterwards, there's a lot of resources. What I wanna say about the different resources that are out there is that um, there are tons of educational resources and tons of ways to get help. We live in a world today, so the resources are available, but do yourself a favor and, uh, and find your resources where you can get more information. Um, when I, I sometimes get the opportunity to do different talks on brain chemistry and addiction or whatever, and one of the things that I will tell my audience is, 
is that anything that I tell you, if you think that it's not true, find out the truth and let me know and call me. If I'm giving you bad information, I want to know that stuff. And so do your own research and let me know if I need to change up what the, the information that I'm giving you. What I'm really doing is I'm kind of tricking people into going out there and doing their own <laughs> research, right? Which is the goal for me. Um, but resources are available. Um, and they are absolutely available to everybody. Um, this number here, we're gonna allow some time for questions at the end. So if you wanna know anything about what's going on, we'll be taking questions and just text them anonymously to this number. I wanna talk to you about what I think is the most dangerous part of vaping. Um, there are a couple of different components to it. So first of all, when anybody who uses any type of an addictive substance, and we're specifically talking about nicotine here, is automatically, because of that use, at a greater risk to become, first of all, fungal addicts, and second of all, to sort of graduate to other substances. Far more likely, those kids who vape are far more likely to do other addictive substances later on. Um, second to that is that we are, if we're allowing our kids to do this, we are setting them up to not learn healthy coping skills for the reasons that they're vaping. To combat the peer pressure, to combat the stressors of teenage life, to combat the I wanna be cool thing that's going on out there. If we're not teaching our kids how to implement healthy coping skills, and we're saying, you know, the vape takes the stress off, go ahead and do it. What we are doing is we are setting them up and teaching their brains how to be addicted to other substances. It's the same thing that we do with a lot of other substances. When we model this, when I come home after a long, hard day at work and I tell my kids I'm having this beer to take the stress off after a long, hard day, what I'm telling my kid is that alcohol is the answer to their stressor. And I am setting them up to use these drugs as a coping skill for their ongoing stressors. And what we need to do is we need to teach our kids how to take deep breaths, how to get out and exercise, how to meditate, how to have talks with adults that, that will educate them, how to say no to peer pressure, how to have these, these healthy coping skills that are gonna help them through life. The biggest problem with vape is that I'm setting myself up and I'm setting my brain up to be addicted to other substances like Another thing that is a, a, a significant danger when it comes to vaping products and teenagers, specifically I'm gonna talk about teens using it, is that any teen who is using vaping products that has not been taught on how to say, I'm not about that, it's funny, I'm like, I'm old school lingo and I work with teenagers and, some, and so sometimes I'll say to the kids, I'm like, so how do you combat pressure? What do you say to them? And they go, what would you say, Bob? And I'd say, I'm better than that. You miss me with that stuff. And when I use terms like miss me with that stuff, they laugh at me because I don't have current lingo or whatever, right? The kids do. But that's the message I want to give my kids, right? Is how, what do I say to the people that are doing it? What I tell them is I'm worth more than that. And miss me with that stuff. Go somewhere else. Because here's one of the other bigger dangers is that kids that are hanging out with other kids that are doing things that are not transparent and out in the open, that have secrets and are hiding things from their parents, that crowd right there is the same crowd that is doing other stuff. And if I'm in that crowd, I'm gonna be exposed to those other drugs, I'm gonna be exposed to those other behaviors, and I'm gonna be far more susceptible. And once I have said yes to vaping, after my parents have been since these guys, since the since the minute they can listen to me, these poor guys, I'm I live I'm immersed in the world of drug addiction and recovery, right? And so every conversation, every day is you know every time I see someone drunk on the street or I see somebody obviously under the influence, I'm like, pay attention to that, boys. Let's see what they're you know it's teachable moments for me and my kids, right? They're probably sick of it, but if I've been hearing it from my parents and I know how bad it is and I know that I shouldn't be doing it, and then I'm doing it anyway, I'm, now I've crossed a line that sets me up to, to do other stuff that I'm not supposed to be doing. Because once I've crossed that line, I have, um, you know, it's easier to cross the next line, and the next <coughs> line, and the next line. 
and so 